Hey everyone, and welcome to DVS Films Podcast. It's just me and you, so that means it is a DVS indie production update. Today is going to be May 14th when you're hearing it. We actually didn't have one last week because we were in the thick of filming our latest movie. And if you've already listened, you know the internet connection wasn't ideal, and I had no clue you need internet connection to actually just record a zoom so that was kind of a little bit of a delay on our end but we are back and i'm looking forward to giving you guys some updates so first off if you haven't listened to some of the new podcasts we have uh, as i mentioned we just wrapped on our 11th shoot for the shapeshifter uh, we finished it on monday morning and we've already kind of rolled out a few episodes just kind of highlighting what it was for me it was definitely one of our uh, best shoots yet not only with what I'm seeing now in the editing side of things, but just also how smooth everything was. The team was fantastic. So before we kind of hop into detail there, again, be sure to follow us online. We have a Discord community, which is rapidly growing now. We've probably added like 16 members in the past two days. So it's always really cool to see. But again, we want to be a very fan-focused studio. You know, we really want to say that we make movies for our fans with our fans. We had Howard, who was with us as our first super fan in the last production, and he is going to to be one of many so again guys you know we really appreciate all the support you guys get us if you are listening to this be sure to join us online take a look at us you know really be part of the community because we want to we want to really engage and grow and the more we get support wise the more roles we get to cast for our fans so it's really a win-win for us so as I kind of mentioned, really the major things, you know, we're starting to get a lot of different things in the work. Um, you know, the super fans have inspired us to really kind of, uh, you know, move forward a lot faster than uh, typically we've been looking at for the past few years. Um, but mainly what that means is we have basically three things now in process. So the first thing is we just wrapped on this movie. Um, again, the movie was absolutely fantastic. I think, you know, really the team crushed it. On top of that, my brother did a really great job with uh, the videography. It looks fantastic. We're already going through on the editing process. I have the first rough edit done. And the first rough is really just kind of seeing how it paces out. And man, it paces really, really good. So already very confident in that course, um, just based on what we're seeing. What's going to end up happening is I'm basically going to spearhead and kind of cleaning that edit up a little bit. Um, and just uh, going through each one of the scenes, starting to look at all of the, the takes that we have and getting the best ones. Right now, it's really basic tech or takes. So it's basically like, here's the wide and then get from one scene to the other just to see how the whole thing flows. Now I'm going to go into each one of those scenes and start pulling the best takes from each one of them, combining them so we have kind of like a solid rough. Uh, while I'm doing this, my brother's actually going away on a trip. But, you know, even while we're on a trip, the, the fun doesn't stop with filmmaking. He's going to start looking at writing the first draft of the the um, Into the Forest 2.0, which is going to be our next film, which he wants to do in July, and it's May. So we're going to look at really, really cranking one out quickly. But uh, today we actually talked through the beats of it. So, you know, before we start the writing process, one thing that we always do is basically discuss what are the major beats? How do we go from point A to point B, essentially, throughout the story? What do we think is, is it going to look like? Um, I laid out kind of what I thought would be a really good one. We kind of hashed out uh, back and forth between the two of us. And now we have a really, really good idea, um, basically, of what we kind of want to see with this end of the forest. Again, it is going to be a found footage. You probably know my thoughts on found footage if you've been listening for a while, but you know, it, it works and we're looking at re revisiting the genre. Um, but basically we have those beats. So he's going to be taking a crack at that script for the first draft. While he's doing that, I'm going to be working on the end of the forest. And then what we both need to do once he gets back um, from the trip is really finalize the murder house. You know, we still have a lot of the, um, information from when the super fans watched it again incredibly valuable feedback like really can't stress this enough guys how much that type of feedback and what you've been able to tell us is going to improve the entire process for us um but we need to go back and kind of address those things address those items and then start getting to work on them because we do want to get it out to our agent we go ahead and get that out to the agent he can start looking at different distribution companies and we can get that one moving so like i said we got three things kind of in the mix right now um we still have girl in cabin 13 online on tubi so if you check that out, please do. But uh, pretty busy. But with the busy is, is all really, really good things. Um, I would say another thing to really kind of highlight is, again, our community is growing really, really fast. We're getting a lot more people. Huge milestone working with Aries or Howard and getting him in the first film. And with how successful it was, we really want to push forward with that angle a lot. 
So, you know, we're already looking at ways that we can improve, cast more super fans, have more super fan community events, really reward you guys because we're already seeing the benefits of having you as fans, as supporters. And, you know, something I've always made clear, if you guys help us get to where we want to get, the first thing we want to do is, you know, give it right back in the sense of providing you guys with um, just really really cool uh incentives and really really cool things just to show you know how much you mean and how much we care so you know we do have the dbs super fans halloween horror nights is going to be one thing for this year but we're also going to look at probably like doing a theatrical release for their murder house in orlando and flying some of the super fans in for that so we can have a packed theater so there's just a whole bunch of really really cool conversations going on Again, I think one of the big things for, you know, how big the the uh, the, the benefits we really put on for the Superfans is going to come down to the Kickstarter campaign. The main reason I bring that up is, you know, a lot of the things we raise with the Kickstarter, I can't see a better way than just pumping it right back into the community, making the community that much better, rewarding it, because I can't think of better promotions than basically just having, you know, real people explain just how much we mean to them because, you know, we really do care about you guys. So that's really kind of the overall community mindset. Um, you know, a lot of work on our end when it comes to getting through this new edit. Uh, number one priority, you know, is really going to be tackling the murder house and getting that script together. Um, and hopefully in the background, you know, I can chip away at the uh, shapeshifter so that we can kind of move into it. But momentum's here. You know, we're really enjoying it. It's a lot of hard work. I feel like I finally caught up on my sleep schedule a little bit, but you know, this is what we want to do. And, you know, like I said, it's a testament that we will really work as hard as we possibly can to make this work. And with your support, you know, I know it's, it's definitely something that's only a matter of time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into some of the listener questions as always. First question is from Aries or Howard. And he asked this one actually before he came on set. And I think he might've been a little bit talking about himself, but how hard is it to deal with new actors that have never had a speaking role? Is there a way to break them in without scaring them away? So this is actually a really, really good question. I'm so glad you asked it. Uh, first thing I do want to clarify is Aries absolutely killed it on set. He did a fantastic job. Within the first two takes, I had literally everything I needed for that scene. And then he went on to improvise and absolutely crush it. He did an amazing job. So really, really good work there. I would say that's a high standard for most people who haven't had an acting role to kind of step up to. But with that being said, um, I think one of the benefits we have is, you know, we also have a marketing business where we work with businesses and a lot of business people, you know, while they're good at what they do, they're good at their craft, they're good at, you know, running their business. They're not necessarily good in front of camera. And I've really found, you know, different ways that I can kind of ease them through it. I've been called a security blanket by a few of them. Um, but I think the real main thing that I would recommend any filmmaker, anyone out there, you know, assure them just how difficult this is. Because if you've ever been acting or in front of the camera, you really should understand, like, it's a challenging thing. You put a huge spotlight on someone, you know, if you screw up, basically everything stops and they're like, cut. And like, that's a lot of embarrassment to just kind of, you know, put on yourself in the sense of, oh no, I, you know, stopped the set and everything there. So I was really trying to assure people when they first get started, you know, I basically run them down what it typically looks like. And I say, listen, the first like one through like 10 takes are just kind of warming up. Usually I see like one to three for like actors, but again, this is kind of going off of like, you know, working with business owners, but you just see something like, you know, Hey, the first like 10 takes are just kind of to feel it out. Then we get our good stuff. Then we kind of, you know, go from there, but um, you know, it's really, really difficult. And it gets better each time. And we just want to have a conversation is really kind of the big thing. So with that being said, you know, I think if you can help them get through the whole dialogue. So like if they're if they get stuck in a certain area and you just like stop, I would actually recommend like saying, hey, no, keep going, keep continuing because we can actually cut through this. But more importantly, you get them to finish. And when you get them to finish, they um, will, you know have more confident getting the way through it. And I find they warm up better for that. If there really are some issues going on to it, um, you know, I think then just focusing one line at a time, you know, saying the line to them, having them repeat it back to you, saying the next line, having them repeat it back to you. Sure, you have to do a lot of cuts or something like this. Uh, we've had it happen with some of our actors in the past, but it gets them moving. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you do have a cinematic with multiple cut points, no one will really know. So those are kind of some tips that I have, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, don't try not to add additional stress. You know, I, I'm always like, Hey, don't worry. You're doing great. Film doesn't cost us a thing. You know, all of these different things that you can say to just kind of warm them up. But that's a great question. 
So the next question is from Glitter Gothin. Um, he mentions, if you could make any kind of monster slash creature for a movie, what would it be? And I actually have a really, I have two different ideas about a succubus concept. Um, and I think a succubus could actually be really, really cool because it adds a dynamic element to the, the, the character. And one of the angles I would like to do would almost be kind of like a Dexter angle where like she just hunts down like sexual predators and things like that. And like, that's kind of her credo where she's like, I don't hurt innocent people. I just hurt these people. Um, I think you could do something really, really cool. But then there's also a funnier angle to that. And this is one that, um, you know, I ended up actually hashing out with one of our actresses, Chloe, on set. The idea of like a succubus who thinks she's really, really good at being human, but she's just not. So it's like obvious she's some type of demon, but like, you know, because guys are like guys, they'll just be like, oh, wow, you're so cool and everything and you like me. And her, their buddies will be like, dude, she's clearly like not human. And they're like, you're just jealous. So I think that could be a really funny short or like feature. But, um, you know, both the serious angle and the fun angle with that, I think, are really, really cool. I think mainly because it adds a lot of dynamic and it wouldn't just be like a monster or someone doing that. It would be an actual personality to it. So I think that could be a really, really cool angle that I'll definitely look at exploring eventually. Um, but I think it's also a low hanging fruit one because a lot of the other monsters, you know, you might need special effects. You might need practical effects, all of those things that will like, greatly increase the budget. Whereas like with the succubus one, you can really get away with with minimalistic um, effects, in my opinion, maybe some eye contacts, maybe like one or two shots, but for the most part, it can just be a person and, and you know, impersonating the, the, the uh, demon. So I think that could be a cool one. So be on the lookout for that. And the last question is from James. You're nine, almost 10 release films in. Is it getting easier to make them or harder? Do you feel more pressure with each release? Absolutely fantastic questions, James. So, you know, right now we do have nine movies out. We're working on the 10th one and we just filmed the 11th one. Um, I would say it is definitely getting easier. So I think one thing that's really cool now is like, I'm very confident in our production process. Like we will have a movie barring some like catastrophic event or something that happens that just completely derails the whole shoot. Something like, you know, camera breaking and like even that, like we could probably find replacements like, it's going to take something pretty, pretty gnarly to, to derail us. So I'm not going to wood. Hopefully that doesn't happen for into the forest. Um, but with that being said, it does get a lot easier. I think one of the big things that we highlighted is we're a lot smarter with the pre-production process. We're just a lot smarter in writing these movies. We're a lot smarter in knowing what we can do. And I mean, that's just something that comes from experience. You know, the more experience you have, the better you are going to be at doing something. What's interesting, though, is as they are getting easier, we're turning up how difficult they are to film. So it's almost kind of like, yeah, they're getting easier. But I mean, the last movie we filmed was by far our most challenging. It was like the most footage that we ended up getting just in one principal shoot. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. it. It's editing really, really well. So, I mean, everything's going good on that end. But it is the hardest script that we've done. So with that sliding scale, I really do think what's going to end up happening is, you know, as it does get easier for us, we simply make the movie harder. And we're always going to kind of push ourselves in that zone of, you know, we're confident we can do it, but it's still going to be a challenge. It's still going to be a lot of work. It's still going to be a process. Um, and that's the fun part to me. You know, that really is one of the fun parts is being able to see the improvement and the challenge. Um, but overall, just really, really confident now in our ability to make films. We're not going to set ourselves up for failure and we know how to execute. So I think that really takes a lot of the, the hard um, parts out of it. Plus there's a lot less moving pieces. You know, we used to have much larger crews and much larger sets. And one thing we talk about with having a large crew, or large set, every person that you add on to it is potentially another issue that can arise one way or the other. So, you know, between those things, I think we do have a good base for us now. However, the one thing you mentioned, do you feel more pressure from each release? I would say yes. Now, you know, one thing that's interesting is like, we're not quite sure how the haunt in the murder house is going to do. We're not quite sure how the shapeshifter movie is going to do. When I watch them personally, you know, they're easily the best, but you just never know with films, you know, you never know what's going to make someone click on it. What's going to ride the, the algorithms better. What's going to do a whole sort of different, um, different things that just happen when you release a movie. For instance, The Devil in the Room is like my favorite movie that we did of The Hateful Eight and it did the worst. So that was disappointing. <laughs> um, so there's always kind of that pressure. And then one thing that we touched on is like, we now have the super fans and like, 
I don't want in any way for you guys to feel like you're adding like needless pressure or anything to us, but we want to make you guys proud. Like we really do. We want to make sure that when you guys see that our DBS product is released, that it's done, you can, you know, brag about it and say, there, there they go. They made that movie. You know, this was a movie that we helped them make. Because again, all of your support, you guys watching Girl and Cabin 13, you guys reviewing this, you guys sharing this, it's all very tangible tangible work you're putting in to help us and what we want to make sure that we do is we execute on that we take all of the support that you guys are giving us we amplify it we magnify it so then we get to you know cast more super fans you know grow and ideally do what we want to do and what our dreams have always been and again you know the people that help us get to that point i'll never ever forget so i would say that's the pressure that we do feel um but it's good you know i always feel like you should be nervous you should feel pressure if you're not nervous you're not pressure you're typically not doing something that it's going to really have like a big impact in your life so that's kind of the way i look at it again thank you guys so much for the questions if you do have any questions be sure to take a look at our discord on the questions for podcast page um you can just go ahead and submit it typically try and answer about three questions each week if you guys haven't joined our discord yet be sure to do it it's really cool um again super fun we do game nights we do trivia nights we have a minecraft server you guys get to watch our movies before anyone else you guys get to go halloween horror nights all these really really cool things super easy all you got to do is just click the join button and our links for our discord but uh other than that you know things are going good we're looking forward to kind of getting back on schedule but looking to execute on another two more movies for this year so it's gonna be a lot of hard work but tune in again for our regular weekly podcast we're actually gonna hop back into going through our movies and the next one next week is going to be the girl in cabin 13 looking forward to hopping into that one and just kind of explaining you know what that process was because it was a big milestone for us especially coming out of covid and you know not making anything for so long so until then have a good one